Right, welcome. Uh, my name is Jacques Fourie. I'm from COCHO. I'm Director of Information Security here for the COCHO Group, looking after a large contingent of um, clients, both regulated and non-regulated um, across the UK, uh, EU and the States. Um, we run Microsoft Technologies and today we're going to talk about um, achieving XDR with, with some of those technologies, looking at some of the principles of building out that operation to support those type of technologies and really how to get uh, the most from it in, 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 a, in, a, team, in, a, in, a, in a team consensus. Manage XDR service, um, you know, basically it's, 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 it's really about doing, you know, uh, the, the, the managed service around the, these extended technologies. Um, when we talk about XDR, we can talk about what exactly it is, um, but really it is leveraging the Defender Suite um, from Microsoft. So there is the Microsoft Defender um, uh, that ex extends right from your endpoint up to your Azure PaaS, depending on what defenders you might have out there, Defender for IoT, Defender for Endpoint, Defender for 365. There's loads of Defender products, but um, you know, Microsoft are, are, are basically, you know, saying that if you have Defender coverage for your environment, you're you're achieving XDR. Um, what, where we overlay over the top of that is the the native scene platform, which is Microsoft Sentinel, um, and obviously we're going to be pulling all those that XDR telemetry in there, and then exercising some SOAR capability over the top. I think it's important to note that, you know, Defender with Sentinel is where you really see the true XDR service shine. Um, they can be run in isolation, of course, and, the, the, you know, the, there's a lot of benefits an organization gets from just having some Defender suites, and there's a lot of benefits an organization gets from having Sentinel. As we know, you know, Sentinel is a seam tool. It's going to be taking telemetry from the Defender suites, um, at the, most importantly, um, but it's also going to be taking stuff elsewhere, you know, you, probably even more importantly from the AD infrastructure, it could be taking telemetry from firewalls like traditional seams do as well, um, and local machines, etc. So there's, there's a whole swathe of things that, that we need to consider here. Um, we use the XDR service, you know, predominantly because it natively integrates with Sentinel. Um, we get a lot of you know, log storage kickback from that, a lot of out-the-box integration from that. Um, traditionally, where you had to plug in other EDR solutions into your seam, it can be a bit clunky. Um, you have to do a lot of tuning, a lot of log passing and that, but obviously, if we use Defender for Endpoints as an example, that's natively integrated with, with Sentinel. There's already a lot of the out-of-the-box playbooks that are available to you to be able to leverage some sort of capability. And of course, if you have a managed service provider who knows what they're doing, they can really tailor that for your business, for your operation, for your analysts, for their analysts, and make that platform sing. Um, we're ultimately here to stop threats. We want to we want to use these tools to make the 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 work and the time taken to stop threats, you know, efficient and optimized. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'll give you some examples of how we do that in our SOC. Um, some some real some real world examples, and we'll also talk through about how we go against building. Um, the seam saw um, solution uh, with, 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 with the XDR technologies um, feeding into that uh, uh, across. Great. So, you know, why do we need to scale this up? Um, I just, just, just on what we're trying to achieve here, of, of course, digital assets are changing. So we've got a lot of um, security monitoring software that's not able to keep up with transformation strategies. A good example of this is SQL, SQL Server, traditional monitoring can can monitor that, can look at SQL um, and, and, and get all the, the relevant telemetry and pump that into your seam, happy days. Your transformation team or a transformation partner comes along, builds a SQL PaaS environment, and suddenly you are struggling to monitor the SQL PaaS environment um, the same way you did that SQL server um, because your monitoring tools are not up to scratch. So that's why we, we're looking at how to scale these, these, these operations from a technical point of view to keep, keep on top of these new digital assets. Threats always increasing dynamic uh, and and rapid. We know that, and supply chain is risk risk is high. So one of the benefits of running these tools, of course, is just having all the log telemetry within your own tenants and having the MSSP plug into it. You're not doing any log shipping elsewhere. You're not shipping, you know, a bunch of your organization's vulnerability footprint to some other data center and another vendor's um, and another vendor's stack. You're keeping all that data. 
in, in your tenant and, and, and that helps mitigate some of that supply chain risk that we're also worried about. Um, just want to talk about stage one and what, what does the Seaman XDR solve for your business? I think, you know, I did touch on this at, at the Coach Summit and it's a big topic and there was a lot of good feedback off the back of that of the summit and a lot of people coming up to talk to me both from Microsoft, from the clients and that, and, and saying, you know, really what, we, what, we, what we're really interested in is what is the actual, actual practical benefits um, that my security operations team gets or my business gets from, from running this, the, this stuff. So, you know, I think, I think where, where we've seen this come together is we're breaking down those silos of security and we've been able to get a clear, quick grip on the threats coming into the business and mitigate them very, very quickly with not a lot of, you know, complex architecture uh, and trying to get everything talking to each other, very convoluted. I've worked with other SOC providers where, you know, it's very kind of, you know, hard to get everything talking to each other um, because of different technologies. Um, I think there's also an element of, um, you know, looking at the various teams and bring, making sure that we don't have security silos in the business because monitoring, we need, we need exact coverage. So I think some of these things help you get there quicker because it is Microsoft to Microsoft. Um, it doesn't have to be Microsoft stuff you're, you're monitoring, but it, you know, most of the time it is. Um, but you know, it, it also extends out to you know, Linux environments, et cetera. Um, you, know, you don't have to complete your, your, your journey to cloud first. We have a lot of customers talking to us about this and you know, we're seeing the, 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 the journey to getting an XDR solution where you can start to leverage some SOAR capability really being scuppered by the, the fact that we need to finish a bunch of stuff first. I think you know, XDR is a big topic. Um, you know, once you start to light up certain technologies on certain workloads, you need to start somewhere and you can't do it all at once. Achieving true XDR means you can see the whole, uh, the whole gambit and really you need to start somewhere. Often people starting with the endpoints and then, and then extending that into MCAS and, and all sorts of other, uh, 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 other solutions as well. Um, and of course, having the seam overlaying that, you know, we need to look at what you've got in, 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 in the stack and how we can augment that. I think, you know, strengthening regulatory compliance through these tools is, is, is a big, big kind of issue as well. Um, we want to maybe use that as a catalyst to get some investment from the business um, to take this stuff, this stuff forward. We're actively being asked by, um, by, uh, by clients to say our insurers are asking us if we have a seam, if not, why don't, can you help us? Um, you know, financial institutions being, you know, feet to the fire by their regulators or in the investors because these things are becoming more and more, more commonplace. And of course, how does it differ from the monitoring we have in place already? Um, you know, I think we can talk about that extensively is that the monitoring um, out there at the moment is struggling to keep up with that, that digital transformation. And we need to make sure that, you know, the transformation plans are not, you know, going ahead of our, of our ability to, to, to have security monitoring coverage. So that com really comes in with, with, with the SOAR um, discussion. So just to summarize there, right, we, we, we want to use this, the, the SIEM SOAR capability to secure the modern workloads. There is a lot of um, automation that can be done against those workloads when a threat exists, and we'll go into that in a little bit. Um, that means that we can react to that far quicker than a human can, and we can get a lot more you know, rich information about the incident very, very quick. We want to break down the rules of security silos. So we don't want mail security and endpoint security and firewall security and all of these things um, in isolation. We don't want our seam in isolation of the XDR platform. We want them all working together. And we don't want our analysts jumping between tooling and all of that good stuff. You know, we want them to have a single pane of glass and be able to pull threat intel and pull information very, very quickly, either via an automated playbook um, or via a manually uh, executed playbook that's going to go and do a whole bunch of stuff very, very quickly for us. And I'll give you some examples. Um, of course, there's the 365 license. There's a lot of customers out there that we're seeing that, you know, have 365 capability, but don't have, uh, haven't actually enabled some of those features. And that's a real shame because they're often paying other vendors to do that. And the big one, obviously, no, no log shipping. We, we want you to keep your data. So really what we're trying to do here is make a cohesive ecosystem that's 
scalable, you know, and we can leverage some of the, the out of the box stuff to great effect, but then layer potentially an MSSP or your team over that to really drive that forward and, and, and you know, tailor it for your business and make sure that it understands your business and it's going to help you ultimately stop a threat when it does come because it's not if but when. So do we have the people and process? I think if we look at the, the security target operating model, you know, if you're building with an MSSP in-house or hybrid, this is a big, big discussion, especially with the advent of these newer technologies. You know, we, we, we finding customers come in to the XDR uh, and Sentinel conversation and they have not even scratched the surface of what the, the platform can do for them from a sore cap capability point of view. And then they are not really seeing the value and they're treating it like another, you know, traditional scene platform. And really then it's going to be a little bit of a, 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 a you know, a, a, um, a sore point because it's a consumption based model. So if you don't have it under control, it's going to start creating a lot of log storage and going to create a lot of um, Azure consumption costs. And that's going to raise a few eyebrows equally you know, as you turn certain things on, it's going to become quite difficult to kind of tame the beast, so to speak. So you really need to know what you're doing. We've seen customers embark on Sentinel and go away from them for those reasons. And we've heard after the fact, we've had customers come to us and say, we know Sentinel can do more. We know the, we know the sort capability it can provide. We just can't get there. Can you help us? And I've spoken to other people who found providers to help them. So we, we often finding that hybrid is, 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 is probably the most um, popular popular me method at the moment uh, and I'm talking you know here for organizations you know anywhere from 200 up to up to 5,000 seats that that seems to be commonplace these days and then they they are leveraging that 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 MSSP hybrid relationship to upskill in these cloud technologies and to get those playbooks in place equally if they are doing more of the hybrid approach in-house they are then you know using the MSSP as a ghostbuster kind of who you're going to call type of service so that they can come in and say right guys we've, we've got this new edge stack we want to bring it in we want to automate some some stuff on it can you can you help us bring it in can you help write some sort playbooks for it and that's where you're going to start to leverage those more senior resources if your guys have the skills the kql skills to run the sort capability within um within the uh, in the sentinel platform um a lot of it is aligned to mitre attack framework so if you if those incidents are coming in to sentinel now it's going to pull up all those those, those 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 signals which is great but we need to make sure that we work into those standards right and when we're building our processes around these sort capabilities that's really really important um i, I think that you know if you look at your incident response process, just because you have some of this automation and that goes to that, that, that third bullet point there, you know, you still need to be aligning to NIST and that you can fall back on the sort capability, which is, which is, which is all good and well, and that is going to save your bacon. If certainly if it's done, done its job, um, and, and, you know, isolated the threat and allowed the cavalry to get out of bed and come and see what's going on um, rather than, it, you know, unraveling very quickly before your eyes. I think, but you still need to have that good, Good best practice around you know following these frameworks for you know security incident response and that and certainly in the in the financial services industry there's been a big light sh shone on you know crisis management incident response around security now for the firms and there's a lot of pressure coming in from the SEC as well we see on in in in, in, in the client space so just some examples on on the orchestration automation part right Let, let's just touch really what that means so if we're talking about SOAR, SOAR is security orchestration and automation um, and 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 really automation is automating one task right so I need to um, isolate a machine um, on the network so we're going to automate that that's great that's one task orchestration really is going to be about running multiple automations at the same time so not only what I do I want to do I want to isolate the machine with with the fender for endpoint I want to do I want to do a few other things so let, let's go into some real world examples of what that might look like so um, we got we got a saw playbook um, you know and we can we can look at it uh, a, a saw playbook and we let's let's say the saw playbook is going to be automated right so we're gonna we're gonna say um, in, in Sentinel that that's now talking to the XDR fabric remember so it's talking to defender for endpoint it's talking to Defender 365. It's talking to Azure AD. It's got its it's got its fingers in all the pies, um, and we're going to say, you know, if you see an incident based on um, this threat family, 
Or if you see an incident that has lateral movement or credential theft or has dumped the memory or is trying to access LSAS or even has a word in it like mummy cats, maybe, who knows? Something is something is blindly obvious in that. We want we want Sentinel now to execute the SOAR playbook, right? So it'll do that immediately as soon as it sees it. And we've written this playbook and we have it in um, you know, executed by Logic Caps, which is all which is all good. So what are we gonna do? Let, 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 let's call the SOAR playbook isolate machine, right? So we know that if we see lateral movement and Sentinel is flagged it as such based on our correlation rule, we want to isolate that machine immediately, right? Let's, let, and we don't want that machine to be talking to anything on our network or outside the outside our network or anything like that. But we wanted to do a few more things than that, right? So, so, so we've created the playbook and now we're going to get it to do a few things. First, we're going to isolate the machine using Defender for Endpoint, right? So Sentinel's going to signal Defender for Endpoint and, and, and issue the isolate command, right? And let, let's just, while I'm going through this list, just think about, you know, potentially having to document this process in a run book that an engineer has to potentially log on to and then follow step by step. It's probably going to take him maybe an hour, hour and a half, depending by the time he's actually got to the incident. So just keep that in mind as I'm going through this list, right? This this saw capability is going to do all of this within seconds. It's going to isolate the machine and defend it for endpoint. We're also going to restrict app, app execution on it. So we're going to stop, while it's isolated, we're also going to stop any more applications from being executed on it. We're going to pull the incident IP address or any addresses associated with the incident that Sentinel has seen, and we're going to immediately block that on the machine as well for whatever reason. We know we've isolated, but we're going to block it anyway. We're going to block any file hashes that have come from, from the incident, any domains, any URLs. We're going to block that immediately. So we're going to do all of that with MD. So that's already six tasks or so that we've done in MD that, would, that someone would have to log onto the MD portal, and find the guy's machine, do all of that stuff, check if it's working. Sentinel's done that within seconds. Next, we're going to go over to Defender for Endpoint, uh, sorry, um, Defender for Identity, uh, and go into Zero D and, and, and set the user as risky, right? We're going to set the user as risky. We potentially might, and we do this with some clients, we might send the manager of that employee a Teams message to notify them that this employee's potential, their account is potentially compromised. We could go as far as to reset their password and send it to their manager, and some clients have that actually. And then we can also reset their password in a zero AD. So that's just a simple example. We're going to do all of those automation talks with one orchestration uh, kickoff um, in the SOAR playbook based on that lateral movement we saw. And what that's going to allow us to do is obviously mitigate that threat very, very quickly. And, and that's going to shave hours off your engineering time. Every time something like that comes in, it's going to, you know, limit all of that, all of that, uh, all of that uh, risk that, that that would have come in with that threat. But let's just say we want to take that a little bit further, right? So we've now done that. We've, you know, we've kind of cooled things off, and we want to now look what's going on. Um, so an analyst is now looking at this. They can potentially, if this is an automated or anything, they can kick off another playbook within a double, you know, just double click on it and they can, we have a, a user enrichment playbook. Now, what that's going to do, instead of going, okay, you know, Joe Blogs, Joe Blogs is uh, joe.blogs at, at company.com, his account potentially being compromised because we saw lateral movement, what's going on with his identity. I'm going to go off now, I'm going to look at his MCAS user profile, I'm going to look at recent sign ins, I'm going to, you know, check his outlook, has any you know rules changed? Has he had any weird forwards? Has he used the password reset tool recently? I mean that's going to take me a fair old while, right? But with the SOAR capability, I can, you know, we 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 have a playbook called use enrichment and I can just tick that off. That's going to give me all of this information in the incident <laughs> within seconds. It's going to tell me, you know, what's their blast radius? Are they global admin? You know, what group membership are they? Do they have any other admin roles, any RBAC roles? You know, did did are they out of the office? Have they been traveling in a place that's not known to them? What are their own devices? What are those changes in their inbox rules? You know, I can interrogate everything about that user that I need to know as an analyst to now take this incident further very, very quickly, you know, literally within seconds by executing that playbook. 
And that's just another example of how the SOAR capability can not only save the analyst time, but get you to the root of the problem. And, and you know, you've isolated the threat. If we go back to that NIST um, incident response framework, you know, isolation is, is a key thing. I think they use another word, but, um, you know, we want to basically limit the, the, you know, the, the fact that, that there's an ISC out there, but also we, we're now able to enrich the incident. We might be able to pull threat intelligence into that as well. Normally that's automated, but a lot of the SOAR capability is gonna shave that time down. It's, uh, you know, if we look at mean time to remediate and respond, that's, that's gonna be drastically reduced. And also your analyst is gonna be able to do a lot better job at doing that. And that's really why the SOAR is going to help us scale this stuff and help us get into in, into this. Um, so I hope those examples are helpful because if we wanna go into the operational fabric and we look at the analytics into the engineering uh, uh, operations. So if we look at the box on the left, you know, we've, we've done some XDR there, right? We've pulled that through Sentinel, um, you know, between Sentinel and XDR, we've got some threat intelligence into it. You know, we potentially have some playbooks that can do a little bit more threat hunting in that regard. And then we followed our, our, our security incident response, our SIR, right? That means we can get it across the security engineering and really start to do digital forensics around that user now. And that's what we talked about, that user enrichment, right? What's happening? What, what happened to this machine? Where have they been traveling? What, why, why have we seen this activity? What's going on? Has this infected anyone else? Is, is it, you know, what, what exactly is going on here? And that whole chain between that operational, those operational teams um, is very, very kind of streamlined and it's, it's very, very powerful. So I wanna talk about a little bit about um, security assurance, right? You need to secure your security and, and that can come back from quality checking that SOAR capability we talked about. You know, we don't wanna rely on it entirely. We need to make sure it's fit for purpose, not missing anything. Um, just like we can't always rely on someone to follow, you know, a 10 step playbook. You know, we can obviously rely on computer generated SOAR to be a lot more kind of rinse and repeat, but we need to make sure that's current. I think if we look at these controls assurance, you know, and look at the controls around how we are building out our SOAR capability, how we are managing, um, you know, changes to that SOAR capability as well, um, it is really, really, really uh, important. So that makes sure that our posture from a response point of view is, is, is moving forward, not backward. We need to make sure these things are kept up to date. Um, with the latest stuff that we're seeing out there and also the latest things that Microsoft are throwing out because we know, as we all know, Microsoft are, you know, changing things um, rapidly. They bring out new technologies every week and we need to stay on top of that, make sure we're leveraging that within the platform because obviously that's why you've invested in, the, in, in that. Uh, we do go back to the three pillars of ISO 27. You know, I'm a big fan of 27. We hold our own 27 here. Uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, right? So we need to make sure that securing access to that data is important. If we're running any SOAR capability, if it's in the platform and it's not being interrogated from somewhere else, if it's not pulling telemetry to different data uh, storages, that's very, very important. We need to understand that. We need to make sure that the, the internal controls around the ability to execute SOAR that might be kind of sensitive needs to be really, really important. Um, you know, uh, we need, we can't have um, people being able to pull telemetry that they're not authorized to. So obviously, you know, we, we do follow those CIS standards in, in terms of, in terms of uh, making sure that internal controls are followed in terms of access and all of those good things. People compliance is a big, 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 big issue. Um, in security, as we know, security clearance in the UK, I think it's MVPP3, you know, with, with police clearance, that's good enough for some government organizations. Um, you know, we're not going as far as the MOD here, but we need to make sure that people are compliant with both the automation um, that is quite powerful um, and the platform and the data they have access to. And of course, we can't mark, mark our own homework. So it's important to have potentially someone peer review some of this automation that you have, uh, make sure that, you know, your security approach, um, both manual and, and, and uh, automatic is fit for purpose and, and not missing anything. Um, and I think there's a lot of misconception that automation is covering everything. Um, you know, there are some products out there that, that claim this, um, 
you know, and, and it's a, a real common pitfall that we see because, you know, you need someone to, to look after this stuff and actually peer review it from time to time. That, that's, that's really, really important. So, you know, let, let's just look at what, what, what could trip you up, you know, when, you, when you're trying to leverage some of this, this capability, right? So you might have an internal skills gap, which is often the case because some of these technologies are really new. Um, we're working with some really advanced, you know, SOC providers, um, internal SOC departments, massive SOC departments that, that are trying to really push the envelope with Sentinel and XDR, but are struggling with that and that's when I talk about that Ghostbuster service that if you have people you can lean on to come in and do some of the more complex saw that is really like gold dust. Um, an example the other day we had one of our analysts come in and took what is a four hour job and make it a 10 second job by architecting some saw through various uh, capability there. So you know that's not only going to save you people time um, but it's also going to, you know, get you a lot faster to mitigating that threat. So the internal skills gap, don't be afraid to kind of make it, a, you know, a bit of a hybrid approach. Partner capability is an issue. Um, unfortunately, we've seen some really bad, you know, saw deployments out there with Sentinel, and that's coloured it uh, in, in, in a bad, bad light um, because it's driven up consumption costs. Log passing is not really good. And I think that's that's a shame because it's a really good tool, and if done right, it can actually save you considerable amount on your, you know, if you do that and you leverage the E5 or the E3 with bolt on stack, you can actually get a lot kind of bang for your buck from the Microsoft stack. So it's really important that that's considered that it's done, is it done properly? Um, we talked earlier about waiting for your transformation to finish. You know, I think, you know, I did, I spoke to CISO the other day and they were saying that they're kind of halfway through this journey. They were going, they were planning to change their monitoring platform after, but now what they're doing is they're having kind of new assets in flight where they don't have proper coverage. That's a real risk. You need to make sure you're ready for what you're moving to so that your security coverage can continue to grow with the business. It's really, really important. Um, if we go to tooling conflicts, I see a lot of this out there. Um, you know, and you know, we know that we want less agents, less things to install, less things to update, even if they are administrative agents or monitoring agents. We we just need to make sure that we identify all of that and the conflicts are identified. Obviously, unifying your stack has its benefits. Um, you know, eggs in one basket is 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 the flip side of all, of all of that. But then you've got to look at the lesser of two evils. I think I think um, one of the other thing around you know taking taking uh, too much of this this kind of saw approach with with, with Sentinel and uh, and the Defender Suite is obviously fear of log consumption cost. You know the 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 importance of tuning not only during the onboard but also you know kind of ongoing is really really critical to making sure that you're managing your consumption cost. You know security monitoring and um, you know. Logic apps spinning up Logic apps and you know all of these type of things within. Um, you know, within within the security stack on Microsoft, it all needs to be taken with the same approach that you would do if you're building a bunch of VMs and everything, because as we know, everything we do actually costs us money. Um, you know, I think a lot of the time, some of the, the journey into this is compromised by coverage myths, you know, Microsoft stuff, so I have to be in the cloud first, or I have to be just with Microsoft. You know, I think the most outrageous Sentinel ask we've had, you know, to plug that in alongside XDR platforms is an AS400. Basically, with the stuff, if it logs, it will, we can monitor it. You know, you do have a native seam capability with Sentinel there to pull any log telemetry into that and make it part of that XDR party should you need to. So we're talking about maybe that old application server running on Unix in the corner of the office and you need to pull logs from that. It's possible. It's, um, you know, you just have a log collector pulling by syslog and Ceph and that's gonna chuck it up. Um, yes, you can't get too fancy with saw capabilities in that, but when you're looking at executing other saw capability across an XDR, um, you know, kind of ready uh, asset, that might be alongside this in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, uh, in an attack chain, that, that's still gonna protect you quite a bit. I think you know the big one in the middle at the bottom there, not leveraging saw for scale. This, this is a big one because I think, you know, this comes back to what I spoke to in the beginning is that, you know, 
if we just put in the monitoring platform and we use some out of the box stuff, it's all great. You know, there's there's some really good stuff that Microsoft are doing in that in that space in terms of being able to leverage the playbooks that they give you. But I think you need to look at it from a scaling point of view. You know, if 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 I put my my hats on here at Coacher, we're an MSSP. You know, as as we take on more clients, you know, we have to hire more people, we have to train more people, we have to extend our offices, all of this, all of this stuff, and our costs go up um, just like any other business. Um, and you know, same goes for your internal security teams. And if you're leveraging MSP, your MSP MSSP costs might go up because of all this stuff. So it can save you money if it's done properly. It can help you keep the 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 amount of time and effort and people uh, cost that you need to run that platform lean and fit for purpose. And you know, you could also keep you know, we know within the security space that uh, attrition is a real uh, kicker. We don't want to have analysts in, you know, tier one bored out of their mind because they're doing stuff that is could um, by and large be automated. So leveraging that solve for scale so that people can get on and do better, bigger things, grow with the team, grow with the tech is really, really important. And of course, limited use of E5, right? I cannot tell you how many people out there I've met who have E5 capability, but they've gone bought a bunch of other security um, because they are scared or they are not fully understanding of what this can bring. They've often maybe gone E5, they've embarked on Defender for 365 and, 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 and Endpoint, and they've stopped there. And then they've got some other things running in the environment. And there's a lot of overlap and a lot of security silos, et cetera, et cetera. It's not really a good approach in my opinion. Um, you know, sometimes you have to have that separation for governance reasons, and I get that. Um, but I think, you know, if you go back to the fundamentals of trying to unify your approach and not have um, a lot of, you know, supply chain risk, that speaks volumes in that regard. So, if, if we if we go to the last stage, which is optimizing the capability, right? So I think, you know, measured approach is 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 definitely worth worth considering. You know, we want unification, you know, um, but we appreciate that Microsoft is an all all encompassing, all there. We appreciate that there's some things that might not be supported. Um, so building an, an, a slightly extended ecosystem is okay. You know, people are talking about unification and all that, and that that that's great. And leveraging that E5 and squeezing the juice of that investment is 100% what you should be doing. But if if there are certain things that you need to bring in that will augment, not overlap, but augment that platform, is a really, really, really good 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 thing to do. And you know, we know Microsoft are going that direction anyway because if you look at the the acquisition of Risk IQ. You know, large threat intelligence platform, really, really great. If you plug Risk IQ into Sentinel, it's going to give you a lot of um, threat intelligence around incidents automatically from various threat um, pools from their data lakes, which is fantastic. You know, Microsoft recognized that. Um, they bought them last year. You know, that, that's been integrated. And, you know, no doubt, like with most, most things, I'm sure it will it'll be 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 part of that stack eventually and uh, um, and and you know I think you know the ability to potentially make those strategic decisions where you know you need that extra bit of telemetry that's going to enhance your ability to respond to the incident is something to be considered um, and, I, and, I, and I don't think you should shy away from that trend analysis and reporting is is really important we need to be able to obviously feed that back into the business and be plugged into that transformation conversation. Uh, I think gone are the days of, is that security is outside of the wider strategic piece. You know, it was kind of like the business is changing and then security monitoring just needs to catch up. There's, you know, compliance have always been consulted, but it's just assumed that, you know, you deploy something new and then security guys can monitor it. That's not always the case these days, especially with the advent of such new digital workflows, containers, Kubernetes, stuff like that. We need to make sure that we are, you know, re reporting back to the business to, to be able to reduce the threat. Um, I think, you know, bringing in help if you need, that's really, really important. You know, the, 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 the conception that MSSPs need to take it all, they don't. Um, a lot of our partnerships with our clients is, is hybrid and it works really, really well because, 
you know, with the best one in the world, our guys can't know the business like someone who works in that business day in, day out and walks through the front doors every day and, you know, has the, the, the water cooler chat. So I think augmenting that is is really good. And then the feedback from them that we get into empowering the sore playbooks that we can make that's fit for that business is really, really powerful. Um, you know, and examples of that, you know, have been, really profound for some some organizations where they've been able to really take you know their 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 kind of security response capability time effort you know have they covered everything and just really use saw to cover all those bases and then enable those people uh, that are that are in-house at the client to do bigger and better things and be part of wider initiatives optimizing uh, security suites rather than than playing whack-a-mole um, and, you know, of course, making sure you're plugged into the transformation journey is, is really, really important. So, you know, just, just make sure that security is keeping up with that. That's it from me. Um, I wanted to see if anyone has any questions. Um, you know, we, we can run a controls assessment on the environment, see, you know, we can look at the, the operational structure and how you're faring against and leveraging some of these tools um, that you already have in your stack and see if you can get more of it. And of course, there's obviously Microsoft funded proof of concept for XDR, you know, and, and Sensor at the, mo at the moment. So that's really exciting. Uh, if anyone wants to in embark on that, please get in touch and we can have a chat to Microsoft on your behalf and take it from there. <laughs>